Brendan, my family and friends, my colleagues, my newfound friends from Nathan, you're all welcome. The most important thing I'll do now is, I've been here yesterday and I was here twice before, and before I forget it, I want to thank, and you'll find out yourself later on, the amazing staff that are in Coolborn Key. They don't do no, they do all yeses, they're helpful, they're just so good, and I think Terry and Grania were amazing. That's enough of that. <laughs> you know, at some stage in all our life, hopefully if you're lucky, you wake up some morning, you look in the mirror, and you say, things can't get any better. <laughs> but my lovely wife, my two daughters, I say that every day of the week. But this morning when I walked into the bridal suite and saw Laura, Orla, a beautiful bridesmaid, it actually got better. Yeah. Uh, Laura was born in May, and Orla was born in December. Now, there was nothing special about those two months, because on those respective months, there was millions of babies born all over the world. But to one man, Orla, Laura, you are the world. Oh. You are then, you are now, and you will be until the day I die. Oh. Uh, so I know thank it. you for that. I know it. I was talking to my earlier on, uh, Brendan's mother, and, you know, we all try to be good parents. But Des and Myra, an enemy won't get any medals because it's very easy to be a good parent when you have great children. And they were. Never create any problem, headache. <laughs> <laughs> and I assure you don't think of doing it in the future. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every dad, particularly when it comes to little girls, wants the best for their daughters. Orla met up with Dave from Nottingham 12 years ago. I won't tell you. <laughs> I can tell you exactly the date. I was on duty and I was trying to catch a car. And they were going faster behind me than the guy in front of me. So the first time Dave came into the house, it was a pleasure. I didn't have to worry about him. Then Laura brought Brendan down. We were living in the official accommodation of the Garda station. And the minute I shook his hand, I could see a decent... Honourable, honest, clean guy. A guy that any father would be absolutely proud of and any father-in-law would be absolutely honoured to call him a son-in-law. So, Brendan, I didn't realise where you got all those qualities until I met your parents a couple of weeks ago in Dublin for lunch. I have to thank the bridesmaids. I know it goes on at every wedding, but I do know the effort that these four girls put in. And an awful effort has gone into this wedding, as you can see. And it's not down to me. Anne was a pillar and the four girls. I don't think Laura could have done it without him, and you'll always be eternally great for him. I want to thank all my friends and colleagues for coming, particularly my friends and my colleagues down through the years. You've been a great support, and I think you all know what I'm talking about, and I leave it at that. Orla, the big sister, the mayor check, you always looked out for Laura. You always minded her, and you were like pepper and salt, you came together. You were a package. So, Brendan. If you upset Laura, you'll upset Orla. <laughs> and I don't mind you upsetting Orla, but if you upset Dave Collins, I'll hide. I know it's left over. I'm not taking any money. If I forget anything here today, it's by way of omission. I'm not deliberately leaving anyone out. There's no pass mark here, and there's no honours mark. It's an informal day. <laughs> We'll have to go to the second last person I'm going to speak about, and that's Anne. I met Anne 25 years ago, when we were in play school. I was gone a lot, and I was called away a lot, and she was there to look after my two girls. Christmas, birthdays, holidays, dressing them up to go to Mass. <laughs> <laughs> Laura wanted to go to a cool barn key when she was four. I said, no. You'll meet a man that can afford to bring it out. <laughs> so, Anna, thank you. You've been a pillar of support for me and for the girls. I have very little more to say. I think Nelson Mandela said one day in some big speech again in Soweto that people love to talk and people don't like to listen. But there's other people that like to talk. I'm looking around me now and on a serious note, I ran this by Laura and she told me, go ahead. I don't think there's anyone here in the hall in the last year, two years, five years that hasn't lost somebody. And it's sad. And those people are not here today and they can't speak. But I was reading something there lately. I was going to say the Irish Times, but John Parham would laugh. <laughs> she had a little girl that got married, but unfortunately her father predeceased the wedding. So she had a, a poem. 
18 verses, but I won't give you 18 verses. I'll give you two. Although we cannot see you, we know that you are here. We feel the warmth of your smile and can sense that you are near. It's so sad you will not be here. On the day we say I do, and so we say our vows today in love and memory of you. Thank you. Thank you.